hills of Appalachia. No, sir, you wouldn't know the name. All right, building my first acoustic guitar with Show Walter Guitars, episode nine. Holy cow, that's a lot. Okay, if you're just new to this series, uh, we are building a guitar and building an Osage Orange OM with my friend Steve Showalter. He's an unbelievable builder. We're here in the Shenandoah Valley. It's a beautiful place, and one of the things that we are committed to is using the coolest tone woods that grow up in the valley. So Osage Orange, Sycamore, and so today we're going to do a lot of work on the neck. We're finishing up some binding. Make sure you're subscribed. I'm Jeremy. That's Steve. Let's go see what he's up to. Steve? Morning, Jeremy. Hey. Man, they just keep coming. Uh, this is like the fourth or fifth, third guitar I guess you've made since we started this project. Or I guess, well if you're counting, because you're basically building ours as well. <laughs> but, oh I like the shirt too. Hey, yeah, yeah. thank yeah. you so much, Jeremy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Alright, so this is Sycamore Top. And is this what, 111? Yes. So 111 on this one. And then right here, the back is cherry. Back and sides is cherry. Cherry back and sides. That's really pretty. Oh, cool, with the sapwood down the middle. Yeah. So with this, here's a question I don't know the answer to. So when you're doing a board like this, the sapwood, that's the bark, right? Yeah, so when next you make, to the bark. Yeah. So when you're making a guitar, does it need to be like inside out, outside in, does it matter? It doesn't matter. Okay, cool. <laughs> Wood is wood. That's really cool. uh, When I built furniture, I never gave that once a thought. <laughs> but when I started to put a guitar together, I thought, uh, maybe it would make a difference. Because that would, if it's going to make a difference yeah, in anything, it would be a guitar, furniture, nah. Yeah. But I called a luthier and asked him, and he told me, Either way, hmm. whatever. <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful guitar. I'm excited for that. All right, so this is episode nine. How crazy is that? Shoo. So, okay, so yesterday we did binding, talk. we did a bunch of stuff yesterday. <laughs> I, did, I forgot all about that. This is a new day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. so I stuck it up there in, in my student stash. Student stash, I've arrived. <laughs> <laughs> so, I finished putting the uh, herringbone on, oh, man. and I, I did the uh, groove for the back okay, so as well. So now today you can put that All right. uh, binding on there. Man, it looks sharp. I'm glad we did the herringbone. Yeah, yeah, that's going to look really sharp. And it's not that hard to put on. I wonder, uh, wonder why I don't do it more often. Is it <laughs> is it worth eight hundred dollars more? That's how much Martin charges. For is that what they hair. charge? Do really? It's an eight hundred dollars. Well, there are a couple of tiny differences. Well, they scallop the braces, but you scallop the braces. No, it don't cost that much to do that. Yeah, I usually just put something like this on there, uh, just a black, white, black strip. Yeah. But. Uh, no, I mean usually you're gonna have something on the top, maybe not on the back, unless it's a really decked out guitar. Yeah, I think it was the right call for this, especially when you look at when we do the end. This is the other thing we did yesterday was putting in this uh, scarf joint. Yeah, the scarf joint here in the end. So we have the Osage Orange on either side, the Sycamore Tortoise, and then Herringbone. Because it all works so well between kind of an ambery, like this is pretty amber brown, yellow. And, but this is all, uh, you gotta always remember the Osage Orange is gonna turn kind of a brownish yeah. color. It'll be kind of oaky, Give almost. Five years. Yeah, but that's a cherry. Yeah. Uh, hmm. This, this is that Osage. One. What is it? Yeah, that's Osage. Uh, get all the dirt and dust off of it, you can see it. But yeah, so it turns, that's about how much difference it'll make. Okay, so make. yeah. So that's gonna even match the top more as far as, yeah. Yeah, I think now so. Now it's a contrast than 
once it's done curing, it'll be more of a match. Man, that's what we keep. I mean, I, I forgot. I didn't realize how many decisions there were until it's like, what kind of rosette do you want to do? Well, what do you want to do for the binding? Oh, do you want to do herringbone? In addition to the wood choices. And then we're throwing in the extra variable of time. You know, in five years, how do you want it to look? Because there's, there's a purple heart guitar up here. A purple heart is another one that looks stunning now. And then, you know, eight or 10 years, I've seen other purple heart guitars. They kind of look like dark. mahogany. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it'll get, you know, it'll go from this bright, vibrant. And it's funny, some woods turn darker with age and then others turn light. I made checkerboards one time. Uh, I made a checkerboard out of walnut and cherry. That's wrong because the walnut, if it, especially if it gets left uh, right. in, in sunlight, it's gonna bleach out. Yeah. And maybe be a little more reddish. And, and the then cherry, the will, cherry will darken. <laughs> and, it, and before you know it, I couldn't hardly tell which blocks. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so the big thing we did was tape this up, or you taped this up yesterday. That's one of our skips ahead in time. But so now that's what we'll do, getting in here. Okay, you pull off one, and then turn it over, put the sticky side down, put your weight on it there, and it'll... Just pitches and pulls it right off. Turn it over again. Look at that. <laughs> well, that one missed. Okay. So rinse and repeat. <laughs> so you're shooting right through. Yeah, not a clever shot. <laughs> That's pretty good. When I'm putting this on. Pretty good line, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you kept one continuous, didn't you? Well, like, I balled up as I go. I mean, that's like with uh, <laughs> Clementines for the kids. It's always a challenge to me. Can I get this whole peel off? in one piece. After you put, you know, your glue, your tape on mm -hmm. about this far or so, I take the hammer and give it a, a, a love tap, ever called it. Really, every every now and then just to get it uh, seated? To, to get this good and tight. Yeah. Oh, you hate when there's a little, mm -hmm. a little gap. That is so tight all through there. Yeah. So, now you are ready to do this. Okay. So now, here's the hardest part about this. Uh, you're, uh, you're gonna start right here. I always put the joint in the mm -hmm. middle of that strip. But when you come up around, when you get all the way around, it may be this long or you don't want it to be short. So you want to clip it off, mm -hmm. uh, but you gotta leave a little extra because when you clip it, it, it doesn't make a nice cut. Got it. And so it, then you have to take a file and I just haven't found a really good way to do this. It's just yeah. by hand. and. I, yeah. I wonder maybe like a miter box kind of thing. Somewhere we never Yeah, but you gotta do it here on oh, this tree project. Cause uh, you can't, you cannot go all the way around here, you know, come back around beforehand and, and cut it off where it goes. Because There's no you way. might get, you might get it a little tighter the next time when you're gluing yeah. it, or you might, I don't know, it's not gonna be exact. Yeah. The other thing you gotta do, if you look at this stuff, this was cut in the factory uh, with a shear that went down over like this. So you can see this kind of rounded here on these two edges. Yeah. If you look on the other side, it's, it's a Pretty sharp cool. cut. All right, so I don't want this rounded down against my uh, wood because mm -hmm. That will create a little glue gap, uh, mm -hmm. fill up with glue. So what I want to do is actually turn that in, and you'll never see that. 
Okay, so you want the square side all the yeah, way out. You want to be out. Yeah, with the square side. Now, the other oh, wait, thing. You're saying the curved side on the inside. Yeah, it's it's in the here. The glue will sit matter. in this little shell. Yeah. Got it. Oh, you're left handed though. Mm. So that would be. So you probably want to go this way. That's what I do. You hold, you hold with this hand. Yeah, I know. And you're going to tape with that. With the I'm pretty well ambidextrous. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. I can do Sometimes I have to do. Uh, the one way and sometimes the other because if I have a perfling, it's only a, a, long enough to go one half. Mm -hmm. I got to start down here and I'll come this way and then I'll go back down here and got come it. this way. Okay, that's probably about enough. And I take my finger and get it to where it's really blue everywhere. And you want to see, you want to see squeeze out everywhere. I see that's that the rough side. sand side. Put it on there good because it sometimes will mm -hmm. pull hard. got to cut that off and then I'll take this file yes okay get a little bit more glue on there don't want to starve it So just go to here. I think you need to uh, sand this top so it'll look better and get it ready. Okay, so the binding is done on the top. We just did the binding on the back. How long does that need to stay glued? Well, that's why I'm saying work on this first and leave that uh, okay. until you until you want to move to the side and sand the side and then you'll have to get it out of the way and that'll be plenty of time then. Okay. Okay. That'll save oh, that's you. easy. You've done this before, haven't you? Yeah. Well does this get swirls? Well, yeah, but we're going to do a lot more sanding. We'll go okay. with finer, and then we end up with straight by hand okay. with the grain. I don't want I don't want to put anything on there any coarser than 120. Okay. When I made furniture, that was where I stopped. 120. And now with the guitars, I go like more 320 to my lap. <laughs> Nice. 
Good job. All right. But I was just trying to get it all on one so, flat. Plane. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so you're right. You could use just a little bit. And then more. back here, two different. It just rolled. I mean, I don't. I don't think it's aggressive of enough sandpaper to. They rounded it. Yeah. You rolled it off the edge. Yeah, two times as I'm going, it just like rolled. Yeah. Well, you don't. I mean, it's gonna be okay here because you're gonna want to eventually round it anyway. Well, yeah. Okay. Here, you don't want to because your uh, fretboard comes in here, and it's nice if it's a good square edge, mm -hmm. and then it's rounded from there. Uh, oh, got it. Because if it's rounded all the way across here, then it leaves a, a hole. So just thinking like, after a while, nothing on this is particularly square, eventually, because it's curved, curved, radius, curvy. So this is your only real like right angle, and even then, it's not even a right angle in some places. Right. So at some point, yeah. Because my thought was like, well, why don't you just run this through like a, a sander? Because it's not flat. Now yeah, take your tape off. Okay, doke. This needs to be leveled out. Okay. I've been dealing with this thing. <laughs> I see a hammer. Have you you seen me <laughs> no. do this? Oh. Yeah, okay, so this has a tapered uh, shaft or mm -hmm. connection. This is a oh, Morse taper. And a Morse taper is supposed to be, you saw how hard it was for me to get out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I almost need a tool to get it out. Well, it should take a tool to get it out. But with this thing running and vibrations and everything, uh, it wants to come up. So now it's pretty good. And I'm uh, working along and it, it starts coming up. So every now and then I have to give it a couple of taps while it's running. Got it. So it's a mallet, not a metal. Right. Because you're not smashing threads. Right. That's what people would get upset about. Well, I know, but uh, he'd probably say, well, if you put that on the lathe and true that mm -hmm. Morris taper out. Took the tape off the front, we shot, saw your tape trick. We did the back of this, the back of this one, and sanded the top. We worked on the neck thickness plane, the headstock, the front and the back. And so, that's, I mean, that's a lot of work. That was, what, two and a half, two hours of stuff today. So, anyway, that's a, that's a wrap for episode eight, except for one thing. Episode eight? Yes, episode eight. I, we're getting to where I have to really remember. So the last thing I want to do is I want to show you, uh, there were three guitars that started right around the same time. My guitar, the one that you were building, and uh, Joyce's guitar. The other two are done, and so this one, we're just going a little slower because I'm not here all the time. But I want you guys to hear, I mean, it's a great sounding guitar. We played it yesterday. So anyway, let me grab the stuff and we'll play that now. Do you have any other thoughts? on stuff before we wrap up? No. Okay, all right, I'll grab that guitar and then we'll, we'll do that.
Okay, so this is a Sitka spruce top. This is a uh, red elm back and sides, tortoise binding, herringbone on the top, ebony bridge, ebony fingerboard, three P, five P snack. So walnut, cherry, and maple. Walnut, cherry, maple, and then cherry, uh, walnut on the back. Um, this guitar was started right around the same time that mine was, and uh, it sounds excellent. So it fills this really big room, and um, yeah, this reminds me, it sounds a lot like East Indian Rosewood. It's really interesting. It has a lot of bass. Um, it's a very full sounding guitar, and uh, but it's just a really kind of beautiful, un unusual um, tone wood. So anyway, continues to live up to the legacy of Showalter guitars, which are beautiful guitars made in the Shenandoah Valley that are just unlike. They are similar but better in really fun ways uh, using unusual tone woods. So uh, this guitar is for sale, so it's on the website. So check it out. I'll put a link for it in the description down below. Uh, check it out. This is serial number 110, and uh, I really, really like this guitar. And it's fun that it was made at the same time, you know, while we're all doing it. So I just got to catch up and build this one out. <laughs>